Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. KHOU, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Stephanie Simmons with KHOU. How do you hear me? It's a little muffled, but uh, we can hear you. Okay, we have a bit of a delay, but we will go ahead and get started. Welcome back to KHOU 11 Morning News, and we are taking you out of this world. Right now, the Expedition 70 crew has been in space for almost 70 days. Their mission launched on September 27th, and they aren't expected to land until spring of next year. Joining me now is Commander Andreas Mogensen, Flight Engineer Jasmine Mogbelli, and Houston's own Laurel O'Hara. Laurel, we'll start with you. We caught up with you a few months ago as you prepared for this mission. How has the experience been so far? Yeah, so far this mission has been incredible. I had really high expectations for it and I think it succeeded every single one of them. Um, it's just been a blast living and working in space. Uh, the crew has been awesome. Um, we get along really well, share a lot of laughs. Uh, the work has been super interesting. Um, all, we do something new pretty much every day. And then, of course, getting to look at Earth and um, just getting to float around never gets old. Oh, I'll bet. Andreas, next question for you. What's your favorite part about being in space? Uh, without a doubt, it's sitting in cupola, our window module, and looking down at our beautiful planet. It is incredible what we can see uh, from space and uh, the Earth is, is truly magnificent to look at. Uh, you very quickly realize that it's one single planet that we all share together, um, you know, and um, you also realize that there's absolutely nothing in the, vicinity that, in the vicinity that in any way resembles the Earth. This is all we've got. The Earth is not only our home, it's our only home, and, and we have to take care of it, and it's just beautiful to see from space. A site only a few have seen for sure. Jasmine, this question for you. Can you tell us more about the purpose of the mission? Sure, absolutely. Um, first and foremost, you know, we're in the, the lab right now. So our mission is research and science. And just as part of living and working in space, we also have to do things like maintain the space station and maintain our bodies. But we do um, research and studies on so many things. We have experiments mounted on the outside of the station that are looking at Earth and, and each has different, different sensors measuring different things. You know, we have a, the way in uh, which our orbit is, we pass over a good portion of the Earth um, as we go throughout our mission every few days. And so we can track changes over time. Uh, we study our own bodies and how they react to space, to weightlessness, to radiation, to all the different things up here. And that helps not only us go on uh, further in future mission missions, but also helps uh, for medical research back home. And then we study lots of different things as well, like different materials, combustion, all sorts of things that help us understand uh, understand things back on Earth. Laurel and Jasmine, you both participated in the spacewalk about a month ago. What was that like? Uh, the spacewalk was amazing. I think it was one of the most incredible days of both of our lives. Um, it was awesome because it's something that we've been training seven years for. And so to get, get, to, get to go and do it in real life, um, and just experience that was amazing. Um, it was also uh, just, it was challenging and it didn't go exactly the way we hoped and getting to work through all of those um, challenges that we had with the support of our ground team um, was just, it was a memorable experience that we'll never forget. Um, also, like Andy was talking about seeing the earth from Cupola, 
Um, it's pretty neat to get to see Earth when you're actually outside space station in your own little space capsule. So those were some views that uh, we definitely won't forget. And Laurel, have you seen Houston yet from space? Could you pick that out? Oh yeah, we've all seen Houston and actually every time we fly over Houston or even close to Houston, uh, you can usually find all of us uh, glued to a window trying to take pictures or just wave at everybody down there um, since uh, that's all of our home and that's where our family and friends are. So it's pretty neat. Uh, also, you can see Houston from a long way away. So, you know, when we're out over the Pacific Ocean, like over Baja or, you know, far up north close to Canada, you can, on a clear day, you can look down and see the Texas coastline in Houston. It's cool. That's we love hearing that. All right, Andres and Jasmine, you were both part of the SpaceX Crew 7 launch. How does this experience differ from others? Your mic is off. Uh, so one of the uh, really cool things about uh, Crew 7 is the fact that we were four different nationalities. Um, it's the first time that uh, astronauts from four different countries launched on Dragon together. Uh, so I thought that was a, a good example of the international co collaboration that underpins the International Space Station. All right, all three of you, we certainly appreciate your time. And real quick, Laurel, because you are from Houston, is there anything you'd like to say to Space City? Absolutely. Uh, I just want to say a huge thanks to the entire city of Houston for all of the support and enthusiasm that you give to NASA and the space program. Uh, I know for me, growing up in Houston is a huge part of how I got interested in space exploration and human spaceflight, um, and that started me down the path of a really memorable career. So I think that Houston is a very special city, and I just want to say thank you to everybody down there um, and all my friends and family who are following along with this mission and supporting us every day. So thank you, Houston. And we know you all will be up there for the holidays. So we wish we could send you some buckies up there. But uh, Laurel, you'll have to explain that to the other two. Thank you all. That's it for us from Earth. And thanks from jo for joining us from space. Thanks so much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KHOU portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from the Houston Chronicle. Station, this is Andrea Leinfelder with the Houston Chronicle. How do you hear me? Good morning. We have you loud and clear. Great. Thank you so much. So my first question is for Laurel. Um, I love that post on X with the turkey socks. And I'm wondering if there's a story behind the socks. And also if you could tell me what it's like spending the holidays in space. How is Thanksgiving and what plans do you have for Christmas? Uh, well, the turkey socks were a gift from my family. They came up on SpaceX 29, the cargo vehicle that just docked for us a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I was pretty excited to open those. I opened them in a package when I was on a phone call, a video call with my family. So that was pretty fun. They were actually the ones that told me I should share those because um, we kept laughing every time they would drift into the screen and they said the, the internet needs to see those socks. And so that's how we ended up there. But um, Thanksgiving was really nice and the holidays are really nice. Uh, we got together uh, with all of the crewmates, our Russian colleagues as well came over. Uh, we got some nice treats on SpaceX 29 too, some roast turkey and fresh fruits and vegetables and cheese. And so we got to enjoy that. We had a nice dinner on board. Awesome. And um, Jasmine, I recall you discussing unique ways you're gonna celebrate the holidays with your twin girls. Can you um, can you tell me how you're celebrating with them and can you spell their names for me? Thank you. I'm sorry, did that mess? Um, uh, yeah, so sorry. 
It was a little hard to hear, but I think you're asking how I communicate with my girls back home. How you're celebrating the holidays with them. I, I remember you were talking about in the pre-launch uh, media days, you had some ways to celebrate with them. And if you could please spell their names for me. Sure. So, yeah, um, we uh, we have done a couple of things, my husband and I, to prepare us for the holidays uh, so that, you know, the girls can feel connected to me while I'm gone and, and vice versa. We've got little or ornaments with pictures of them and pictures of us as a family. Uh, you know, we've got a menorah, felt menorah that I'll be adding a candle to each night up here. Uh, and they'll have one back home that they're doing the same with. So we have little ways to, to connect. I'll get that information for you. Okay, and um, Andreas, this is your, oh, sorry. Was I Okay, sorry. Um, Andreas, uh, this is your second time to the station, though the first time you were up there for just 10 days, and this time's a lot longer. So I'm curious, what's it like having a long duration um, compared to the 10 days? Well, it's a completely different experience. I mean, last time, uh, my first mission was incredible. Uh, but it was a sprint. Uh, in many ways, I was a guest on board the space station. I was focused solely on doing science and technology development. Uh, all my time went uh, to that, and it was over in a, in a, in a blink of an eye, it felt like. Uh, this time, the space station is my home. Um, you know, I have to create a, a, a daily routine up here so that I can maintain my work efficiency uh, throughout the six months. This is much more, much more of a marathon and uh, the um, uh, the work that I do is, is much more varied. Uh, the focus is still science and technology development but uh, just by the fact that uh, I'm up here for six months I have to participate in all of the maintenance and repair activities, all of the logistical work uh, that it take you know, that's required to unload and to load all these um, cargo vehicles that arrive. Uh, so there's just a, a lot more uh, other types of work. Um, and it's uh, it makes the whole thing a, a much different experience. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Laurel and then Jasmine, can you both tell me about your first space flight? You know, what have been the best parts? What's most surprising? And of course, how is the spacewalk? I don't know if there's been a worse part to talk about, but um, every, everything's just been so fun. And like, it's, it's awesome getting up here and just having everything be brand new. Uh, one of the, something someone told me on the ground right before my launch is that you only get to experience something for the first time once. And getting up here and being on space station, like just the first time, even when I was still in the Soyuz capsule and we had just reached space, like seeing my pencil float in front of my face, like that actually still hasn't gotten old. Like when I said it, when I'm using a tool and I set it next to me and it just floats there, like I still kind of stop and take a minute just to be like, wow, that is just floating there. Um, or just passing each other things uh, around modules and stuff. It's all just really fun. Um, one thing I think that was surprising and neat was how quickly our brains just kind of remap and adapt to a 3D environment. Um, the first couple days we're up here, if we pop into a module, you know, from a different perspective um, from what we're used to seeing on the ground, like say we're on this, we come in on the ceiling, like you you have no idea where you are on space station, but you really quickly learn your way around and just kind of um, adapt to working in a totally 3D environment. And then I'll agree with Laurel, it's absolutely uh, exceeded my expectations, which are already pretty high, but I was a little nervous I would get up here and not think it was that cool, but uh, floating, the uh, Allura flooring has not w worn off on me, a uh, floating has not worn off on me, the um, Allura looking out the window and, and seeing our planet, uh, although we, we pass, uh, you know, the same places every few days, it's it's always slightly different based on the lighting, based on the weather. And so it's just been incredible and time has gone by uh, so quickly. Uh, you know, Andy and I just hit 100 days up here and I can't believe it. I want 
time to slow down a bit because we're having so much fun up here together, you know, working and living. Um, and then, uh, you know, you asked about the spacewalk as well. That was a, a highlight of my entire life, probably the highlight of my entire life. It was absolutely an incredible experience. And to go out with, you know, uh, my crewmate and good friend Laurel, both going on our spacewalk for the first time, um, and just being out there fully exposed and, and reliant on each other and the ground team working with us, um, it's definitely something I'll never forget. Um, and this next question is for Laurel. Uh, you said you're bringing up notebooks. Have you been drawing? And is it hard to draw in space? What are you drawing? I, uh, I've done a little bit of drawing up here, but um, actually I found some watercolors in one of the bags here, and so I've been dabbling in that a little bit. Um, one, because my brother-in-law on Earth, down on Earth, uh, he's been doing watercoloring, and, and they're so good that I wanted to try it as well. But also because once I got up here and started looking at the Earth, um, there's the colors are so amazing that um, trying to capture something with just a pencil seemed a little bit more difficult and like I just wanted to try to capture the beautiful colors of Earth and so uh, that's what I've been doing um, as far as art goes. Uh, and Andreas, you know, what is your favorite task on the space station? You were talking earlier about making it your home and um, I've seen you taking a lot of pictures from space. What are some of the cool features you've seen? Oh, um, you know, there are so many cool things uh, I've seen. Um, a lot of it is is just sort of luck. Um, when I happened to float by the window, um, I, I, I saw, a, well, a, a shooting star. I don't know if it was a, a, a meteorite or maybe a piece of space debris, but I saw something whiz past underneath us and then burn up in the atmosphere. That was really neat. I've never seen that before. Um, I saw recently um, the Himalaya Mountains, Mount Everest, on an a incredibly clear day, uh, which was amazing to see. Um, I've been participating in a, in a science uh, study uh, where I'm trying to photograph uh, and video giant lightning strikes called blue jets and red sprites and, and seeing uh, some of these incredibly powerful thunderstorms uh, and the lightning that they produce, uh, especially the, this like blue tinted purplish lightning uh, has also been very, very fascinating. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of your time and enjoy the rest of your time in space. Thank you so much and thanks for the great questions. Station disease and ACR, that concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>